got it. All right, Yolana, take over. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Yolana Zykavich. Um, I am an illustrator, uh, educator, and um, and and ten years ago, I thought it was a great idea to open an antique store. So <laughs> now I do that. Also, <laughs> so um, I I have been illustrating for I don't know about. 30, 40 years now. So very long time and, um, doing freelance work here and there editorial pieces. Um, I do some product illustration, um, lots of things. I've done murals. I've done, um, all sorts of things. I work in different mediums. Mostly I work nowadays. I work digitally, but I also, um, um, something I work with a lot is wood, and, um, you know, I love to cut things out on my bandsaw and paint them. And <clears throat> that's something that um, I haven't done in a little while, but I will get back into it. I'm, I'm certain of it, but mostly digital right now. So I see some um, of your creations behind you on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are some of my guys. <laughs> so I also... Um, you know, I, I collect things. So behind me, you see, um, these are Pennsylvania Dutch hex signs. I got very interested in those, um, a little bit because, um, I'm Ukrainian. So we really, um, you know, we love anything kind of, um, you know, symbols and, and the, the meaning of things. And so, um, it's probably what attracted me to those because I, my I used to make a, the Ukrainian Easter eggs, the pissing kit every year with my grandmother and my mother and my, um, my aunts and cousins. And so when I saw the Pennsylvania Dutch stuff, I was just, you know, enamored of it ob for obvious reasons. It's very similar. So, um, and, um, I used to collect masks. I mean, you can see some of that stuff, but, um, you know, collections always change, but I find, um, it just, it's a huge inspiration for me. Um, and so I, I actually, um, I'm going to start showing my screen. Let me see here. Uh, full screen. Okay. Um, can everybody see this? Yeah. Okay, great. So um, what when Kelly first, I'll go back to the first slide, Kelly asked me uh, what sort of class I would like to teach. And I had a, little, a bunch of ideas. And one of them was I had so much fun doing this particular assignment um, that I thought, I, I think that other people would love this too, because a lot of people love to cook. A lot of people have family recipes and or just have recipes that they've created themselves. And um, <clears throat> and I've um, I've done this assignment with my students. I, I teach at Moore College of Art in um, Philadelphia, PA, and we do an assignment with them um, where they are illustrating a, uh, a recipe. And so I thought this is like Kelly thought. Out of all of these, Kelly thought that this one might be the most interesting for you. So um, I did an illustration for a friend. Uh, a friend of mine started uh, a magazine up. I don't, I guess this is something you do. <laughs> he was just like, I think I will start a magazine. And so he started a magazine called Kitchen Table. And I did a cover for him. And this was my cover for him. They actually ended up editing some of it down. And, but this was the, the, the whole feel of the magazine because it's out of Portland is um, just like, you know, food, being a foodie, local uh, sourced foods. And so it was such a, it was so much fun for me. And so he asked me to do it another illustration and this one was more about family and so I wanted to show you some of the sketches that I sent to him and so he actually asked me to write a story which I'd never done um 
you know, I've written plenty of stories, but not for an editorial magazine. And so <clears throat> he asked me to write a story about a kind of a family get together. And so I wrote, um, I wrote this story and, you know, I kind of added some sketches. I wanted him to um, pick which one he was most interested. And it was a, a bit of a luxury where he said, oh, it could be one page, double spread, however long that you want this, which is, I mean, a little bit unheard of for editorial piece. Um, so round two sketches, he said, I really want this to be like, um, you know, he, he liked that story, but he liked this one a little bit better. So um, I had a story about um, my, the women in my family would have um, what we would call basically tour oars every Christmas. And so <laughs> every woman in the family would bake a tort and then show up at Christmas Eve dinner with her tort. And it was like a, a battle. <laughs> A battle of whose tort was the most delicious tort of all the other torts. And it was really hilarious for us because we we're like, no, we can't possibly lose here because I mean, then you'd have to taste each one because you never want to shame someone. You need to sample each and every tort, and make sure that you you were properly aware of which one was the winner. But, you know, of course, your mom was probably the one that won. So um, but it was just it was really funny to me because, um, you know, you wouldn't dare give out your recipe for your tort to <laughs> your competition. So, you know, each I would just I thought this was like the most joyful time for me. And so my uh, the editor agreed. And so I wrote this um, this little story about these these tort wars and so this was the end result of that um of that assignment and so um I had done all these like really beautiful little images um you could probably so you know you could probably see all these little um images that I did on the side I actually illustrated all of those for the final piece but um, I guess the art director was like, no, we'll just take these two tiny little drawings. And so, you know, they wanted their own touch on the on the um, layout. And so I had a kind of a spread here of all the food that we would have. And um, there's like a, a very famous Ukrainian dish called kutya. It's like a kind of a wheat berry dish the kids hated it. It's kind of weird. It's a little slimy and weird. And so and part of the tradition is you put it on a spoon and you throw it up into the air. And if it sticks onto the ceiling, that means you're going to have a really great year. So <laughs> ceiling would be covered in this stuff <laughs> and like we bury goo. And then you'd have to, after holidays, you have to repaint your ceiling. It was just the weirdest thing. So <laughs> <That is> weird. <laughs> just so strange and so um these are my um my aunts my aunt um my aunt Sheila is the fox my aunt Christine is the little cat my aunt Helen is the little uh squirrel and then my mother is the is the bird on the side and so oh we're not uh, seeing that image oh you're not seeing it oh this didn't come up I'm so sorry well, I see the table with lots of food on it oh okay i wonder if it's um i wonder if it's very large is it let me see if i can make it how's that i don't see a change oh, i don't see changing. the title of your illuminating your recipe a guide and then it like has that pink in the background with like, okay oh it's not oh i'm sorry i have like a whole slideshow it's not showing up <laughs> no Oh, that's strange. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on though. Let me see if I can. Okay. Are you seeing this at all? Yes. Now I see that. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll keep it on this mode. Let me see if it'll. Yep. Okay. So let me go back a little bit. So this was the first, you probably didn't see this then. 
Um, so then these were the sketches. More sketches. And then this was the final result. Okay, so then the little bird is, that's my mother. Um, and so I tried to include as many details as I could, but this really um, kind of spurred this assignment for you. So essentially what I'd like for everybody to do is, you know, and we kind of, you may have um, already gotten a recipe or maybe you have something in mind, but um, I wanted you to choose a recipe um, sometimes it's really helpful. And this is something that you can do later. You know, you can, honestly, this can be as long as you want. You know, you're not beholden to anything in particular if you don't want that. Um, so if you're interested in doing a very long recipe with every single thing, um, you know, included, that's totally fine. If you want something that's kind of like a showpiece where you can have it just like a page where you're just framing the page um, and this is something you want to give out to your family, you can do that too. If you want to do a kind of a double page spread, um, that's also acceptable. So, and you have to sort of think about your, your orientation too. Do you just want... Um, you know, a kind of a, a vertical piece with your recipe kind of in the center, or do you want um, maybe a double page, like horizontal spread? Um, so some things to keep in mind for this would be, um, do you want to have like the finished product in this illustrated piece? Maybe you want to have, um, a scene where let's say that you pick um, your Aunt Betty's like, um, you know, gazpacho soup or something like that is something that you're interested in. Um, and maybe you really want to commemorate your or immortalize your Aunt Betty. And, you know, then you might have an image of your aunt, you know, actually creating the soup. Um, and then maybe on the side you have interspersed some sort of ingredients um, and then a little bit of the recipe um, possibly you know this could just be about people enjoying the finished product you know um, a little bit like I have in the illustrated piece that I have here where it's um, you know the food is kind of laid out on the table So these are some possible layouts to think about. So if you're going to be doing the double spread, so you might want to have your recipe. Think about um, if you're if you're thinking about, I don't know, like making creating a book out of this. Let's let's say you have a whole bunch of recipes and you're like, my dream is to illustrate all my family recipes and turn it into a book. And you could really plan for it. So and part of that would be making sure that you have the, you know, like a specific size that you want to do your book um, and that you're accounting for the gutter. So in publishing terms, so this basically this is where um, the fold of the images right down the center in the gutter. Um, so what that means is you have to be very careful about the information that's getting a little too close to the gutter. So make sure that you, this is only if you're really planning on having this be like a double spread book situation for yourself. So you might have the recipe on one side and maybe a little bit peeking out on the second side. And then maybe you have some of your um, imagery kind of cascading around, or maybe you have just a vertical piece where you have the recipe and the entire image just, just kind of folding around the entire piece. Maybe you have something that's a little bit closer to what I did where I had just the illustrated piece on one side, fully illustrated. And then I had the recipe on the other side, 
and the recipe is kind of unhindered. You can um, probably fit in a bunch of information. You don't really have to edit anything down. You can really fit everything in there. And maybe you just have like just a little tiny little image in there. Um, <clears throat> and perhaps you want something that's like, okay, I want to do an image that's um, finished and I want to have the recipe over the top of it. Maybe you have like a little character there. This is another layout. So let's say that you are like, I don't care. I, I'm going to abandon all, you know, reason. I'm going to have this giant poster. Um, the recipe is going to be down the center. And then I'm going to have ingredients on one side. And then I'm going to have the finished product on the other side. And then lastly, you could have something like the recipe is just kind of floating inside the area. And then your images is kind of, um, you know, pouring out around it. And this is a bit of, um, you know, it, it's kind of more unusual. Um, it's a little bit more um, organic looking. And um, I do have some examples on some stuff. So, you know, if you're just interested in like maybe some ingredients and it really doesn't matter about the entire recipe because this is really up to you. Like if this is just um, an exercise of you illustrating food um, and maybe you're just sort of organizing um, some imagery to make it look like a recipe is going to happen. This is a really, this is a good um, solution for that. And even something like this, something exceptionally simple, like maybe you just have a recipe that's just literally a line, like grill or boil this, you know, particular item for two or three minutes. And then that's the whole recipe. So it really gives you a lot of leeway to be very creative. Um, and perhaps you just want ingredients. This is a really beautiful illustration of um, just some beautiful textured food. Another example of that. Um, and what I like about this is every style can fit this. Every single, so if you have a, like a very, did you know, painterly style, Perfect. If you have a very sort of, um, you know, um, more um, digital style or something like that, that also can work for this. This is another beautiful example. Um, if you have really good handwriting, this is a great assignment for you because you could really showcase some of your beautiful handwriting, even if you don't. I think it's really charming. Um, you know, or if you're, if you're, pretty good with um you know any of the digital um programs like adobe illustrator or photoshop you can certainly do the lettering um you know digitally this is when i was speaking about um a layout that's like a little bit more fun and organic this is a great example of that so here you have like the title of your piece you have some of the ingredients coming around. Mm -hmm. um, you also have them listed in here. And then you have more of the information um, kind of typed out to the side here. So everything's kind of organized. It's almost compartmentalized here. This is another fun one. So again, with, you know, this person has very beautiful handwriting. And so there um you have um the directions are here everything is kind of um floating here and then some of the ingredients here um maybe you don't want any ingredients i mean at all or any text whatsoever you could actually have something like this which is i, th I think is really lovely where you're just featuring the food so most people can figure out by this exactly what is in the sandwich or in this little pita so you have your bread on either side you have 
um, you know, some mayo and tomatoes, some lettuce, whatever meat product this is, and some tomatoes and some olives. So it's a great little example of like, okay, well, I don't want to do any text, but I really want to um, feature the lovely food. This is a, this is an excellent way to do that. Um, presentation. So some of the illustrations that you've seen, um, you know, they kind of hint at this, but this is a really beautiful way. So let's say that you wanted to do um, a recipe and then really showcase how to set up your table. And maybe you really want to get up close and personal with the food. Um, it's just such a beautiful presentation. And here you can even see all the ingredients. So, you know, you could have your um, title over here and maybe just some of the rough ingredients and then the directions on the other side. This would fit perfectly. There's, there's enough room for everything here. And another one. So, you know, it might take some, a little bit of time. If you're working with more traditional materials, maybe you need to actually make this, photograph it, or have it, you know, live on the table and do a, a quick study. Um, it might take a little while for you to get all that stuff together, but it'd be worth it. Another really sweet example of layout, beautiful. It just, you know, some of these colors. So, you know, that might be a decision that you need to make like, okay, well, do you want to do, do you want to illustrate a recipe that's, you know, kind of traditional or you want to do something that's a little bit more out of the box and has ingredients that are really colorful, very um, beautiful, maybe very rich in color. You know, cause sometimes like a pot roast is not very like cute, you know, 